One last lesson in our chapter together, just a review of some Lewis structures. Never hurts to just keep practicing our Lewis dot electron structures. There you go. Our Lewis dot structures. Let's start with a compound, perhaps a very simple one, just to review the highlight. Silicon tetrahydride, SiH4, pulling some of these out of our homework from the back of our chapter. SiH4, of course, silicon will become our central atom. Never pick hydrogen as the central atom, and I can think symmetry. Pick the one you have one of, the least electronegative element. Since silicon lives in group 4A, it's going to contribute four valence electrons. Hydrogen lives in group 1A, but there's four of them there, so we have a total of eight dots by the time we're done. Silicon in the center, attaching back to the central atom, and we come up with a quite symmetrical molecule, silicon tetrahydride, SiH4. Simple enough, all the dots are gone. Hydrogen has the octet it needs as of two, and silicon has the octet it needs of eight. Let's try, how about this one next? H2SO4, sulfuric acid. And I want us to know that oxy acids will have the hydrogens attached to the oxygen. And so it's a good little note, you will see that anytime you're drawing for an acid, the hydrogen will go to the oxygen, never to the central atom. And that's what the um, acidic hydrogen is in an oxy acid. The least electronegative element we'll place in the center, that is sulfur. Let's count our electron dots. Hydrogen will contribute one apiece for a total of two. Sulfur lives in group 6A, so it will contribute six. Oxygen lives in 6A, but there's four of them, so that will contribute 24. 24 and 8, we have a total of 32 dots by the time we're done. So it's just bookkeeping. I want to write that neater so we have that to tally with. So 32 dots. Attach back those oxygens to the central atom. And how many have we used? 2, 4, 6, 8 leaving us 24 remaining. Fill out the octet with the remaining 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. No dots left. Well again, how do we arrange hydrogens onto the oxygens if there are no dots? I think that's fine because the hydrogen only really needs to have one set of bonded pair. So I'm going to just think symmetry and I'm going to place the hydrogens on either end. Could have done top and bottom and that would have looked symmetrical. Left and right will have done that as well. And instead of having unbonded pairs of electrons, oops, Instead of having unbonded pairs of electrons, what we'll now do is have two unbonded pair, but we'll be able to turn that into a bond to the hydrogen. So as we look at just erasing what I want, I'll do that here as well, erasing the two dots, and putting them in as a bonded pair, instead creating a single covalent bond. And there is the structure for sulfuric acid. We've used all 24. We turned a lone pair into a bonded pair to create an oxy acid, such as sulfuric acid. Oxy acids will attach the H's to the O. So these, these are the acidic hydrogens. How about something along the lines? ClO2, negative 1. And I'm picking this one simply because it's a negative ion. It reminds us that chlorine will contribute seven. It lives in group 7A. Oxygen will contribute six, but there's two of them there. So now we're at 12 from its contribution, plus the additional electron from having a negative one charge. So here we have 12 and seven and one. That's 20 electrons by the time we're done. Chlorine will be placed in the center, the least electronegative. We will place the oxygens back to the central atom. 
20 minus 4 leaves us 16 remaining. Fill out the octet on anybody but the central atom. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, leaving us 4 more. 1, 2, 3, 4. And this particular structure will need to be placed in a bracket since it is a polyatomic ion and showing that it carries a charge of a minus 1. Let's comment on a next set of question here where it says, uh, based on a Lewis structure, predict the ordering of the NO bond length in the following structures. So we're given NO carrying a negative 1 charge, NO2 carrying a negative 1 charge, and NO3 carrying a negative 1 charge. Based on Lewis structures, predict the ordering of the NO bond lengths in the following structures. Well, let's go to work trying to figure out how many we have. And as a matter of fact, what I've done is just recopy this problem. This should be a positive one charge. The other ones are nitrite and nitrate, which are indeed negative. So here we have um, nitrogen contributing 5. Oxygen has 6. But the plus 1 says we actually lose an electron. So now we're down to 5 plus 5. We have 10 dots by the time we're done drawing this structure. Here we have 5 from the nitrogen, 12 on the two um, oxygens apiece, and the additional for the uh, negative 1 charge. So here we're going to have 18 dots. And again, nitrogen 5 plus the 18 for the 6 times 3 plus 1. So that looks like 24 dots by the time we're done there. So we'll begin here with this structure. We'll draw for NO positive 1. Two atoms bonded together. We'll connect them. That takes two electrons, leaving me with 8. Filling the octets, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. No dots left, so I can't keep filling that out. So here's a situation where we know we'll need multiple bonds. And we can do that by moving in two sets of bonded pair, forming a triple bond, so that now each of them have eight. A triple bond, we're predicting to have the shortest of bonds, aren't we? Now here's the nitrite. NO2N becomes the central atom. We'll connect the two oxygens back to it. Thinking symmetry, I should go over cross. I was just going to get crowded there, but I'll keep symmetry going here. So that used 4, so that gives us 14. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 2 left will go on the central atom. Lone dot there. So no dots left, but nitrogen's not done. Here's a scenario where we say, well, we know we're going to have a multiple bond, but do, how do I know whether to take it from this oxygen or from this oxygen? Well, this is the term we're learning is called resonance. That they aren't indeed one or the other, but a combination of both. So what we'll end up having to draw um, let's go ahead and erase. I'll just pick this one just to have one selected. And we'll draw in a double bond. 2, 4, 6, 8. 2, 4, 6, 8. 2, 4, 6, 8. So we now have one possible correct structure. But there's two of them that we must draw, the two that are in resonance. So now is an equal but lovely structure. We have oxygen going to nitrogen going to oxygen. And I'll place the double bond on this particular structure, leaving it with two unbonded pair. And the nitrogen here, then the oxygen. Keep in mind, these were ions. I should go back and be very clear. These do belong in a bracket, showing that they have the additional electron, or missing the electron, as in the first case. But here's my second structure. Resonance. The NO2 has two possible resonance structures. And what about that third NO3? 
and goes in the center, attach back. And how many have we started with? We had 24. We just used 6, leaving us 18. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. No dots left to place on the, ox on the nitrogen, so we know that we'll have a multiple bond. We have three equal places to take them from, so therefore we can predict there must be three resonance structures that we have to show. So I'll just select the bottom one first, erasing that bonded pair and I'll place in a double bond right here to this oxygen, giving it two unbonded pair. This does belong in a bracket since it's a polyatomic ion, but we'll have to draw three total structures by the time we're done. So let's take a look at what the next one would have a, a resonance structure. Should we just go directly to the double bond here, singlet, singlet, so now this would have the two unbonded pair. These would have three unbonded pair. Placed in a bracket with a negative one. And the third one we have to draw, we can kind of show in residence, giving myself room, with the third structure. We went to the left, we went down, we need one more to go to that third oxygen, O. And we end up with a structure that is an equal valued choice. Hard to draw dots with this pen. So here we have three, two unbonded pair here, and three unbonded pair around the other oxygens. And so comment about the bond length. I'm just cleaning up the work here. There we go. So negative one. All right, so now we know definitely this structure up here, the very first structure, had no resonance, no resonance at all. The triple bond has the shortest bond length. Alrighty. But now in this structure, as well as in the other structure, we would say that single bonds are longer than double bonds, but these bonds are exactly the same length. They are in resonance, exactly the same as one another. And so therefore, they're longer than a double bond, but shorter than a single bond, but in both directions, central atom both directions, they are indeed equal lengths to the oxygen. Same here, if I'm at the nitrogen, looking left, looking right, looking down, all directions are of equal bond length. They are in resonance, somewhere than the distance that lies between a single and a double bond, but in all directions to the oxygens, they are all of equal bond length. And that concludes our lessons on bonding.